Hi, physiology class. It's Mrs. Brindle. Let's talk about the sense of smell. Like our other senses, the sense of smell evolved to help us survive in our environment. It can trigger very strong emotional reactions that result in our avoiding things that are dangerous, like a forest fire, or it can cause us to approach and find a mate, find food. It helps us to survive. Our smell receptors are called olfactory receptors. They are chemoreceptors. They respond to chemicals that are dissolved in liquids up in the nasal cavity. The olfactory receptors extend down from the olfactory bulb, which is embedded in the ethmoid bone, and then the little receptors extend down into the nasal cavity. So here we see a blown up version of the olfactory bulb, and down here are our olfactory receptors. So those little extensions, the little cilia or hair cells sticking off of the ends are where the odor molecules will attach and stimulate, and stimulate those neurons. This is a little better view of those olfactory receptors again. So the yellow cells over here are our olfactory receptors. The little cilia extensions on the bottom are where the odor molecules will attach. We can see some supporting cells here that make the mucus. Um, the moisture is necessary to help dissolve those odor molecules. The olfactory mucosa or mucus lining in the nasal cavity is at the very top of the nasal cavity. The odorants or the odor molecules are carried along the mucosa. They come in contact with the sensory neurons way up high in the nasal cavity. The cilia on these neurons contain the receptors. Humans have about 350 types of receptors. So the hair cells, so here's our little hair extensions on the end, and if we blow that up up here, we can see that the hair has protein receptors attached to it, or embedded in it, that form little shapes. So the odor molecules with the complementary shape can plug into the appropriate receptor site. So the little circular molecules will plug into the little circular sites, and the little triangle-shaped molecules would have to plug into a triangle-shaped receptor site. Odorants, or scents, are coded by combinations of olfactory receptors, and we call these their recognition profiles. And specific receptors may be part of the code for multiple odorants. For example, let's say the scent of a banana is created by the profile of receptor 1, receptor 25, receptor 130, receptor 250, all firing off together, and that creates the smell for banana. This graphic has all kinds of good information in it. So we see the young man smelling a flower, and there's different types of odorant molecules of different colors up there inside the smell that's created by that flower. And those odorant molecules are going to travel way up high, up in his mucosa layer of his nasal cavity, up towards that olfactory bulb. And you can see... It we have different types of receptors here, represented by those different colors of cells or olfactory receptors, green ones and orange ones and purple ones. And the odorant molecules, because they have different shapes and sizes, are going to plug in to different receptors. So we have the orange little round ones plugging into that receptor and our green triangle shaped ones plugging into that receptor. So as the different shaped molecules plug into different receptors, we're going to create that profile that's generated by that particular tiger lily flower. If enough odorant molecules plug into receptor sites, we are going to stimulate the sodium channels to open up. Sodium is going to rush in, depolarize that neuron, and a message is going to be sent from this neuron up onto the olfactory nerve and up to the olfactory bulb and then onto the brain it's going to go. The olfactory message is going to travel 
from the olfactory bulb along the olfactory nerve and into this part of the temporal lobe, which is the primary olfactory cortex. So the temporal lobe is where we're going to interpret what that odor sensation was. An action potential occurs when seven to eight odor molecules bind to a receptor. Roughly 40 of these nerve impulses must occur for a smell sensation to be reported. There are 20 million olfactory sensory neurons split between the epithelia of our right and left nostrils. In comparison, dogs have about 220 million olfactory sensory neurons. The temporal lobe isn't the only part of the brain that's going to receive that olfactory message. It will also travel through the limbic system, which is going to affect our emotions. We have a strong connection between sense and emotions. It's going to travel through our hypothalamus, which will have an effect on our appetite. And it will also go to our association cortex, which is where we store memories of those smells. So maybe we need to go through our little file folder index to figure out what flower that was. This graphic is for the right-brained people. So we smell a barbecue. That affects our emotions, which is the limbic system. Goes to the temporal lobe to our auditory cortex for us to recognize it. The hypothalamus is going to be the autonomic responses. Maybe reflexively our stomach starts making digestive enzymes. We might also be motivated. Our appetite is triggered. We want that burger. Goes to our association cortex where we dig up memories of burgers and what they look like, what they feel like. Our sense of smell is much more sensitive than our sense of taste. Methylmercaptan is the smell we're most sensitive to. We can detect one molecule of it in 30 billion other odorant molecules. People can detect 10,000 different odors, distinct odors. Here's some main categories of odorants. I'm not going to have you memorize these, but just for your interest. There's putrid, which is kind of rotten flesh. Ethereal, which is more of a fruity smell. Resinous, spicy, fragrant, and burned. Rats are 8 to 50 times more sensitive to odors than humans are. Dogs are 300 to 10,000 times more sensitive. And it doesn't have to do with them having better individual receptors. The difference lies in the fact that they have a greater number of receptors than we have. Humans have 10 million receptors per nostril. Dogs have about 1 billion olfactory receptors. That's going to make them better sniffers. As you can see in this chart, we are not equally sensitive to all the different odorants or scents out there. We're very sensitive to mercaptan. In fact, the uh, gas companies put mercaptan in the natural gas so that we can detect it so easily when there is a gas leak. That gas is actually odorless. The methane gas that comes out of our gas jets in the classroom is odorless. It's the mercaptan in there that allows us to detect when there's a gas leak so easily. Women have been proven to be more sensitive to odors than men. We have lower threshold levels, so it takes less of an odorant molecule to stimulate our olfactory receptors. And our sense of smell changes during our menstrual cycles and even during pregnancy. There are professional sniffers that can distinguish up to 100,000 different odors where most of us regular folk can only do 10,000 different odors. Smell odors have a great durability in our memory banks, so we can recognize smells for years and years after we've smelled something for the first time. We have a very strong smell memory. Smells adapt very quickly, so within 30 seconds of smelling something for the first time, that smell is going to weaken and lessen, and it won't seem as strong to us. That's why we put perfume on, and it seems really strong. A few minutes later, you can't even notice that you've got any on at all. Smells also mask each other so that the stronger odor will completely cover up the weaker odor. We have a hard time attaching verbal labels to smells. 
Our smell vocabulary is not very big, so we're going to see in the lab that we do that you have a hard time, even though you're recognizing scents, you just can't put a name to what that scent is. Scientists call it the tip of the nose phenomenon. Let's do a little experiment right here. So I want you to look at the rose down below and give me some descriptive terms for what that rose looks like. So think of them in your head. Okay, now give me some descriptive terms for what that rose smells like. Okay, so did you say it smells like a flower? And then after that, did you go right to, well, it smells like a rose? How about the banana? Give me a descriptive term for how the banana smells. It's tough, right? We don't have that many words for smells. There is a disconnect between our sense of smell and language. And one hypothesis is that the majority of our olfactory processing is occurring in the right side of our brain, in our temporal lobe on the right side, while our language processing is occurring in the left side of our brain. We do have strong emotional connections to sense, and that's because those olfactory messages are traveling through our limbic system. So we have figured out that certain scents can trigger certain feelings or even behaviors in us. Uh, the lavender lotion is great to put on at night before you go to bed because it does relax you and makes you a little bit sleepy. We also know that we have a very long smell memory. That those memories, because of the emotional connection, can stick in our brain a long time. Pheromones are very interesting. So these are chemical hormones that are released through the skin and they are detected by olfactory neurons in the nose. So we can actually release a chemical from our bodies that travels through the air to somebody else's nose, gets up into their nose, and stimulates them. So, for example, men smell women, and that has an effect on their testosterone levels. It makes their beards grow faster. Women smelling men has been shown to make women more fertile and makes their menstrual cycles more regular. Even women smelling women seems to be um, effective on menstrual cycles. So if you have a group of women all living together, like a family of, with moms and sisters, or in the dorm where you have five girls living together, over time their menstrual cycles will sync up so that everybody's on their period at the same time because everybody is releasing these pheromones that have an actual physiological effect on another person. They even make perfumes now that have pheromone attractants in them. These are very expensive perfumes, but that within that cologne or the perfume, there are chemical pheromones in there that attract the opposite sex. These are just some fun facts. You won't be tested on it. Loss of olfactory sensation can cause people big problems. You can lose your sense of taste, which can you know, have an effect on your motivation to eat, which can be a problem for elderly people. They just don't want to eat. It can affect your ability to sense danger, You know that fire smell or gunpowder smell that you don't know is there, or rotting flesh. Uh, it, has had, it has been shown to have an effect on a person's sexual libido, probably because of the pheromones. And it can be a precursor to Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. So losing your sense of smell can be a, you know, a diagnostic tool for doctors.